So in our last video, we built out this interactive chat application, only the front end using view components. And it was a lot to cover, but now we want to get connected to Laravel and start persisting some of these messages to the database, as well as add some user authentication. To start, let's go back to Laravel and set up our environment so that we can begin storing messages. One of the first steps we probably want to take is to create a message model and a message will have a model it'll also be stored in the database so we probably also want to create a message migration so let's go do that luckily Laravel has a method to do that we can make a model and we can also pass in dash m to create a migration with it so I will uh, PHP artisan make model I'm going to call it message and I also want to create a migration with it. So it created a migration. I haven't set up my database yet. And recently I've been wanting to play with SQLite since I've never done that before. I've always used my SQL and you have to set up a database every time. It's kind of annoying. Uh, so I think I'm going to take, take the plunge and do SQLite. And I will pretend that I know what I'm doing. I did read up on the docs beforehand, so this is not a complete uh, surprise. but. Uh, it is required that you add a database in here called, I'll just do um, db.sqlite. And then you have to uh, reference that in your environment. So I'm going to copy the full path and paste it in under db database. So we have a messages migration. Right now only ID and timestamps, but we will want to add a message text in here so I maybe we'll just do a, a text field with message uh, I'm not too concerned about other parameters and then we will want to re uh, refer to a user so we will want a integer and it'll be user ID of course I want to be unsigned as well blah 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 but again this is just a demo and that's pretty much it honestly messages right now don't need to contain much more than that so I'm gonna go ahead and run that migration next we want to set up our relationship between messages and users and that's very easy to do with Laravel all you do is define a has many and belongs to active record relationship so what we can do is create a function within the message model called user because then you can refer to the messages user this way and we will return this has many or belongs to user class likewise on the user model you'll want to say that this user has many messages so we can say messages return this has many message so then if we go and we uh, tinker, we can try this out. So I'm going to start this up again and art tinker. I can whip up a user really quick. And so we have an icy waters. And let's say um, icy waters, we want to um, give her a new message we can say app user find two and then messages using the active record relationship pass a another method called create and then give whatever parameters we need to create this message so in this case it's message and say hello from IC oh we have a mass assignment exception this is something I always run into we just need to say what fields are fillable kind of annoying but let's go ahead and try that again awesome so now if we go to uh, IC's messages we should see hello from IC great so right now we have uh, the back end set up for storing messages and assigning those to users but we don't really have a way for users to sign into our app or to authenticate to this chat room or to assign their username to the actual chats they're sending. So let's do that. Laravel makes this tremendously easy again using a 
a artisan task. It's called make auth and it's going to scaffold basic login and registration views and routes and everything. So uh, let's just do that really quick. Art to make auth already done uh, pretty quick. You'll notice back in our routes file, we have a auth routes, which is really handy. Now we should be able to go to something like uh, register or login. Login gives you a, a nice login, and, and it, you'll notice they're using the proper bootstrap like framework. We can we can inherit that a little bit, uh, and I can also register as a user. So I'm just going to register as myself for now for our examples, and I'm logged in. Uh, chat is available to me. However, it's not um, specifically hidden. So if I log out, I can still get to chat. So one way we can tackle this is to just simply add a, um, a middleware to the chat method in our routes and say uh, middleware auth. So it's going to use the web middleware. So if I try to refresh this now, uh, as a logged out user, it's going to redirect me to the login page. I'm going to log in again, and I'm back at the chat. So that's really neat. Uh, we have our chat locked down and our users uh, able to go to the chat. Now let's spiffy up the chat real quick to match everything else. Okay, so I just did that really quick, but now I'm using the rest of the app's uh, layout, and it looks really neat. Okay, so we have this data that we've added in and it is a little bit reactive, but it's not persisted to the database. So if I hit refresh, it doesn't go anywhere. And it, if there are new messages, I don't see them. So uh, what we can try to do then now is to A, load messages from the server to our actual chat app and B, post new messages to our server to save them. So let's start by loading the messages in. How would we go about doing that? Luckily, Laravel comes with a, a framework called Axios that lets you make these sort of requests through the um, server. First, let's uh, set up a route. I'll call this um, route get messages. And this, this is just going to give us messages uh, for the chat app. And we can return message all. I have to prefix it. And we can test that by just hitting that right now in our server, in our browser. Uh, not found messages is what we need. Cool, we have our hello from IC that we created earlier. So back in our app.js file, we have uh, a couple options for loading in this. We can make a request after the uh, page is loaded or more specifically once the component has mounted and it's ready to go. So when it's been created, I want to tap into Axios, which if you'll remember in Bootstrap has been uh, set on the window, and that is a simple uh, HTTP library. We do axios.get messages, and this uses promises, so I can simply do then. Uh, the response can be handled this way. So uh, for now, let's just console.log out the response and see what we're working with. And this should happen uh, when this chat loads. Cool. We have a XML HTTP request object with data headers and data. Here's our message, hello from IC. Sweet. And so, I mean, this should be pretty straightforward to load in to the, um, to the chat app. Uh, there are a couple issues that I'm seeing right away. Uh, right now, we haven't locked down our messages route. So any Joe Schmell could break in and look at all the messages. And of course, it's a very simple app, but we just have them all sitting in one bucket right now. So let's try to add a middleware again for this, like we did for the chat itself uh, called auth. And see if we can still get the response. It is because we're using the session token. That's just fine. Um, Next, we don't have any sort of uh, user data. We have an ID, but no name. Uh, so how do we get the name into the actual uh, message object? Uh, that is a great question. 
there is something in Laravel called eager loading. And so if we go back to our, our route here, we're just returning the messages, and that includes like literally the, the columns in the database. But uh, if we wanted to include all of the, say, users connected to those messages, uh, it's super easy to do. You can just say with and then whatever you want. Uh, so I want the user with it, and then instead of all, just do get. And I think it's user since that's the name of the table. And so I'll try this again and refresh. Uh, 500 error. I'm guessing that I did this wrong. It's probably user. So the name of the model instead of the table. Cool. And if we inspect our array, now we have a user object with uh, IC Water's full name, which is awesome. And how do we transfer this sort of data model to the view component? Well, we can uh, take the message again from the data. So our uh, messages are going to be essentially response.data, right? Uh, and we can set that to this.messages. So let's try that. So we have some stuff. Uh, the author, or sorry, the user is being printed out this way. It's it's the JSON representation. So if we just update the way that we are, are, are representing our user in our view component, that should be fixed. But uh, we see the hello from IC. We did see that uh, beginning stuff to start with. So we can just go ahead and empty out our dummy data for now since we're using real data. Um, it would also be handy to have like an empty state. So if we go to our chat log and uh, we could maybe do like empty uh, v show if the um, messages dot length is equal to zero, uh, and then maybe our empty is like uh, nothing here yet. We can maybe add some padding to that so it's not ugly and text align center. So when it's booting up, there's nothing to show yet, but then we see hello from IC, and then finally we want to update our chat message to use the correct kind of form of user. So we're, we're getting a user object instead of a user string. Uh, we will do user.name here. IC Waters. So can I talk to IC? Let's try. Um, hi there. Okay, it, it got my message, but not my user's name. So remember, we updated the structure of the user that we're emitting from this chat composer component, but we're sending it a string. So we probably want to match the data format. Uh, again, we're just hard coding a name in there. Um, maybe this is a good opportunity to like pull a, a dummy name. And, and maybe this is something where you would hit the server on page load and get the current user's information. I'm not going to to do any of that right now because it requires some authorization stuff but uh it's okay let's just uh either hard code it so we can do name john doe or one thing that we could do is maybe just grab it from the dom which i know is really gross but um it is what i'm gonna do and it will just give me the text and no uh nothing else Cool, so it's grabbing my name from up there. Fun. Uh, so when I'm sending a message, it's not persisting it to the server. Again, if I refresh, I just get IC's message, not mine. How do we do that? Well, probably with a post route uh, to our messages model. So just like messages, we can do route post messages, and uh, we'll do something to um, store the new message of course uh, we already we already have an auth so we know that there's going to be a user and so maybe we have user is uh, auth user again here this is where you could maybe do some validation if the user has permission to be posting in this room but again super simple uh, and then our message is going to be in our request so uh, Laravel's request helper we can get the message string and so we could do something like user messages create message is going to be this message. And since we're only using this once, we could just drop this in here. 
Sweet. Uh, and then assuming that all goes well, we could just return uh, a status like OK or whatever, success. OK, I'll do OK. And um, I almost forgot to change this to post. But So now if a user posts to messages with some stuff, um, we can create a message and hopefully it persists. So let's go ahead and use Axios to persist that message to the server. Um, right now we're just pushing it right under the queue, but we want to persist to the database here. So let's use Axios to post to messages with this payload, which is message. Let's just test it out. Let's try hi there. So I'll see hi there from Josh Larson. Now the true test will be if I hit refresh, will it still be there? And it is, so it persists. And I can send another message and it should persist. Very cool. Now I've logged in as a different user to the same URL and I can also start typing from Icy's account. So I can say hello again and Icy Waters shows up. But notice how uh, the message I just typed didn't show up in the original screen under Josh Larson's account. I have to hit refresh each time. That means it's not live updating. We don't have any reactivity. So if I respond again, it doesn't show up until I refresh in the other screen. So in the next video, we're going to add some real-time activity to this using Laravel Echo and Pusher and event broadcasting. So stay tuned.